Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we're going to start. Uh, we're living in extraordinary times. This is called civil rights, racial justice, and democracy in the age of Obama and Ferguson. And we've been seeing extraordinary things. And what I want to talk about today is the way in which Tufts has an opportunity right here. Um, we've seen more protest in the last two weeks than we have seen in two generations. And that protest is not just about the criminal justice system. It's not just about Black Lives Matter. It's about American democracy mattering. It's about civil rights, human rights, social and political justice. The Center for the Study of Race and Democracy at Tufts is doing active research on race at the local, national, and global level. What does that mean? What it means is we think about things like um, disparities. We think about social, political inequalities. What we saw vis-a-vis -vis Ferguson and what we've seen with Eric Garner is all connected. Issues of voting rights, issues of the law, issues of public policy, public education, mass incarceration. Ferguson is really a case study, a metaphor for where we're at in the 21st century. Core issues of the CSRD, mass incarceration, immigration, healthcare disparities. Um, we even have a, a, a new program that we're going to be doing, reimagining black capitalism. So we, we keep the public and the private sector intact. When we think about Ferguson, Ferguson is a case study for a larger conversation about race and democracy in the United States. At the CSRD, we've been doing this national conversation about race and democracy for the past two years. Engaging cross-generational activists. What we've seen in the last two weeks is millennials, and I mean millennials born after 1992, our students, more engaged in places like not just St. Louis and Boston, but Miami, Washington, D.C., Seattle, Oakland, than we've seen, I would argue, since the early 1970s. The age of Obama, the age of Ferguson, what do these juxtapositions mean, especially for a university which is an idea machine? Okay. This is from Ferguson, Missouri. You're killing young black youth my age in the streets. We 90s babies, 80s babies. I don't give a fuck how many guns you got, none of that. We react off our feelings. I wish that they would have did the right thing. I wish that you know, this was a golden opportunity for our politicians to be on the right side of history. Um, but they chose not to, so for me, man, it's like, I've always felt, you know, if it's fuck us, then it's fuck you towards the system. When they actually offer something that stares in the face of anti-black sentiments that exist in this country, when we actually start to talk to each other and hear each other, and we don't throw the, the race card term around, we don't throw the, the racism word around, this innocuous word that no one knows what it means, when we actually sit down and we go, no, these systems that we have in place are anti-black, these policies that we have in place are anti-black, this shoot first, ask questions later is anti-black, the way that we treat our black slain men and women in the media after they've been gunned down and can no longer speak for themselves is anti-black. When they throw that political bone and we can actually address it, and start to make change, then we'll be satisfied. Now those are all images from the last two weeks juxtaposed against images from August 28, 1963. We can't live in a country that praises the movements for democracy in the 1960s, but when those movements are re-energized in the 21st century, we are taken aback. We are angry. We're pissed off that we can't use a highway, that we're being disrupted, right? All these movements matter. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 said that the greatness of America lied in the right to protest for right. This was Dr. King. Um, when we think about the March on Washington, this was a disruptive movement. What's interesting about this movement was that at the time, no one knew that the nation, decades later, would embrace this movement, would embrace an MLK holiday, would embrace an MLK memorial, right? It was contingent. 
So this history is happening right now, and we can be a part of this history. Martin Luther King Jr., when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for the best in the American dream. And he's talking about lunch counters in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, February 1st, 1960, which starts the wave of direct action. Thousands of students, including many white students. What's interesting that we're seeing in 2014 is so many young white students who are active in this movement, this movement where people are saying black lives matter, but even though race is at the core of this, it goes beyond race. They're touching on issues of economic inequality. They're touching on issues of immigration. They're touching on national and global issues of social justice. Where are we going to be in 50 years? What does this all mean for us? Tufts University, Jumbos, alumni. We have um, Saul, who's been here since 1964, when the Civil Rights Act was passed. 50 years later, we've got more African Americans in prison now than we did 50 years ago when the Civil Rights Act was passed. Um, I think this is a real opportunity for Tufts University. Um, the CSRD is really um, at this point, just a guppy in this wider sea or ocean. Um, imagine if we had a center that was connected to race and public policy and was the leading such center in the United States. Issues of Ferguson are connected to issues of public policy and democracy. Imagine if we could channel student protests into not just nonviolent civil disobedience, but into doing actual research connected to so many different constituent groups. Because the way in which change happens in this country is through political, social, economic, cultural institutions. So I, I'm here talking about the CSRD and the way in which the Center for the Study of Race and Democracy can be at the cutting edge of the way in which we live now. Some of these activists from Ferguson have just met with the President of the United States. Um, they talked about, in a policy way, a specific way, how they could ameliorate the many issues that they're talking about. Not just criminal justice, but beyond criminal justice. Uh, at Tufts, we've had a history of talking about active citizenship, a history of talking about we're a global university. On issues of race, we've been much less focused. We've been much less decisive. We haven't been um, leaders. We're trying to be leaders now. So what I'm I'm here really imploring everybody who's here to care about these issues. I'm very, very proud that Tufts University students are doing nonviolent civil disobedience. But what if we, as one of the major universities in the United States, were a center for studying race and democracy in an in a interdisciplinary fashion that connects? I talked to Admiral Stavridis, that connects with Fletcher that connects with IGL, that connects with uh, the, the School of uh, Veterinary and Medicine, that connects with the medical and dental school. What if we put our money where our mouths are, right? What if we walk the talk vis-a-vis -vis racial equality, vis-a-vis -vis democratic justice, and what if we provide an example for all these young people who are hungry? The reason why they're so active, they're hungry for social and political transformation in this country. And as universities, we are idea machines. We are the people who provide the big, ambitious idea. In the 1960s, that big idea was racial equality. And guess what? Even with the passage of the Voting Rights Act, August 6, 1965, the Civil Rights Act, July 2, 1964, open housing in 1968, we still haven't succeeded in that big idea. So as I close, 30 seconds left. With 30 seconds left, what if we could say to ourselves, yes, Harvard has the Kennedy School, Austin has the LBJ School, we've got Fletcher, but what if we had a center at Tufts University, a center for the, rate, for the study of race and democracy that connected to public policy, that connected to these pressing issues of social political justice, but that was a research-based center, right? That took all these people out of their silos that are looking at this issue from different perspectives, and we looked at it in a, in a, in a not just a vertical way, but in a horizontal way. What if we were the leading university in the country and in the world to talk about race, democracy, public policy, equality, social justice, and connect that to the research that so many brilliant faculty and students are doing? And so this is an aspirational talk, not just about me and my research, but, but about where I think that we could be together as a university in the 21st century. Thank you.